My name is Eileen Inman and I live in Red Hill, Surrey. I have two daughters, absolutely fabulous relationship with them both. I've been very involved in their lives. Vicky got married first. She gave me two grandsons. My eldest daughter, she'd had a boy and a girl. So I've been to all the school plays at Christmas time and you know, midterm, sports days. I've had it all. It's just been a fabulous journey. Love you. Oh, I love you too. I've told you love this. Love to the universe back. No, you can't say that. Yay. Perhaps you need to stay here then. Get your mother to drop you off again after the party. <laughs> it was actually um, quite nerve wracking. And, you know, Mother always had it that Marks and Spencers, it's a good job. Um, so, you know, you should try and get a job there. So I went and I had an interview. But in no time, you know, they were friendly. You could pick up how it all worked. I loved it. I loved all the different people. Um, you know, no two days were the same. You know, no two people were the same. I mean, I can ride it. But like so, but it still just needs a wash? Yeah, it just needs a wash. I was on a routine check for the doctors. And whilst I was there, I mentioned to him that I just had this pain. Not quite in my, it was sort of in my side going towards my back. It wasn't a bad pain. I only could feel it when I laid down. But because I was always sporty, I knew it was just a pain that I didn't ever have before. August time, went on holiday with the family and some friends. In the pool, I realized that I was running out of breath. After the holiday, we came back and had the scan done and there was fluid um, on the lungs. That's when they told us that not only was it cancerous, but um, it was terminal and that it was all asbestos related. Well, it was my daughter, um, she was with me, the two of us together, and those mother and instincts come out straight away. I needed to protect her. I didn't think about me at all. You know, I put my arms around her and I said, you know, it won't be that bad. But I just comforted her and I said, look, they've said it's slow moving, so we'll just take one day at a time. But of course, over a period of days, then we found out that in fact, I only had um, six months maximum um, of life left. We actually found a professor in London. He said that he would do surgery. The pleural lining on the left-hand side was removed. Um, some lymph nodes were removed, as was some of the lung, more lung than what they thought originally had to be removed. Some muscle around the heart. Then you're in intensive care um, for four or five days. It wasn't available on the NHS. I think in the end, we must have spent somewhere like 30 or 40,000 pounds. I mean, they looked after you very well. And my professor, he did everything himself. Um, I, I just felt so hope because, you know, he said to me, minimum, he said, you're going to get three years. Well, when you've got six months against three years, it's like, wow, you know, it, it seems a long time away. But having said that, three years has gone very, very quick. I wanted those extra three years. I, I wanted that time. It was hard after the surgery because, you know, the surgery was only just one part of it. Then you had to have radiotherapy and chemotherapy. Those first six months were so, so hard. You just didn't know how to lay or what to do, but you were still alive. And then you just started to progress bit by bit. And then you're on to another Christmas, not going quite as mad as you might've done before, but you were there to celebrate it. <laughs> 
she's gonna wear it to work. Well, she will. I will. Did, we did take Kimberly's um, label off her turkey before we went. Because I wanted to wear it around the town. <laughs> <laughs> then that was it. Life picked up. You know, you could do a lot more. And so went off to Spain, went off to Cyprus, went to Norfolk, went to Tynemouth, Cornwall. It was just non-stop holiday. It was fabulous. But come May, because this was the end of April, May, I went to the doctors and said, you know, look, my breathing isn't quite right. Um, who did another scan straight away. Um, yes, my cancer had returned. The diagnosis is that you have six months. Well, asbestos was used quite a lot because it was a good fire material. But of course, going back all those years, I knew nothing about asbestos. You don't have to be in the environment itself where the asbestos is. You know, if your partner is out and working and comes home with the dust on his clothes, just by washing them, then you've exposed yourself and you can actually end up with this cancer. Memory just suddenly came in and hold on, Mark's is, you know, we're, we're doing some refurbishment work. I can just remember it so, so clear. The fridges had been pulled out and above them, the tiles were missing and you could see all the electrical work going through. The manager of the store at the time, he said, can you just clear this mess up? He said, before the shop is open. Of course, there was all this dust and large pieces um, of asbestos that I was trying to break so that I could put them in a bag. We're done. <laughs> it packed my hand! It packed my hand! Yeah, that's what Vicky's trying to get them to do to me. Ooh. They had um, a newspaper um, advertisement. Alex, you know, said, you know, please give them a call. So I gave them a call. And when I spoke to the solicitor there, um, I said to her that I had um, worked in Marx's. So she said, look, you know, can I come round? Let's have this meeting. So we did. She felt that there was a good case. They've just been absolutely fabulous. And because there's never been any pressure from them at all. The whole process has just been so, so easy with them. I just carry on as normal. They do all the work. All credit to Hugh James, you know, the way they've worked and put it together. Um, I just get an email now and again and might have some documents to read or sign, but it's, none of it's been a hardship, none at all. The first time this charity asked me about it, I had no thought at all because I was just overwhelmed with all what was going on. So just, you know, give yourself a few weeks, talk about all your jobs and, you know, by doing that, you, you may discover, like I did, that there was quite a bit of work. The only benefit that I will really get from it is that if a drug comes available, and if I have to pay for it, there is a drug, immunotherapy. Now, there's only a 2% chance that it would work, but it may be a chance at the time that you want to take, and it would be good to have the money there to be able to pay for it. So I think it's more that if you hold Marks and Spencers accountable, if somebody else comes forward, it may well help them. And it may help them, you know, if it's done early enough, that, that they could enjoy some of this money. Unfortunately, I don't know whether I'm going to have that time to do that. Oh, no. See, see how wet we've got? Not that wet. No. No, the sun is shining. It's not cold. It's not windy.